Okay, let's get this started. Hi, I'm Gib. I uh, came up with this idea a while back, uh, just uh, on a lark, kind of uh, trying to find things that would be interesting to do. I, uh, we had a previous uh, session like this uh, earlier, um, and it worked out really well. We had some like professional writers that came in and just you know, knocking around this idea and uh, really you know, hit it out of the park. I had a lot of fun with it. So, you know, energy level was real high at that point, a certain time of the day. Maybe it's a little bit quieter now or something. We'll see how this, this goes. So the, the, the thing that sort of instigated this in my mind was uh, I've been hearing a lot, we got to do something with this door here. Uh, had a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, working in PenguinCon before, you know, the writers, and I, I knew that that was a, you know, kind of an interesting uh, group of folks here, and, uh, you know, kind of had that interest in the back of my mind. But I've, you know, heard a lot about, uh, you know, these storytellers, I was listening to public radio, and they have like these storytellers that come on, and they have contests and whatever, you know, that type of thing. Oh, that's a cool idea. But usually they have a, a story that they've pre-written and, you know, sort of just read that story to the group. And I thought, well, you know, that's not a really dynamic kind of way to evolve everyone. So I uh, kind of came up with this format. I've been doing some other things with people participation and that type of uh, thing for some of the technical stuff that I, I play with. And I thought, well, this might be an interesting idea. So the basic premise is that uh, you know we can come up with rules and change the rules or not have rules or whatever we want to do. Um, so the way we did it this past time it was kind of interesting is we just went around the table and you know as you you come to your turn you add a little bit to the story when you feel you've gotten to the point where you don't know where to go next or you feel you got to a good spot to, to pass to the next person you do that. Um, but we don't have to do that. I mean, we could jump around. The, uh, and so we've had people that were contributing at it from across the table as they, they had to put you know some some little bit into it. Um, so I, I basically started it off with uh, you know some idea of uh, setting a few characters and a real simple plot and just letting it uh, sort of develop and evolve as it went along. Uh, so you know just somehow in the science fiction realm. Uh, something, you know, and so we started to talk about what rules we wanted to have and things like that. Uh, so we did a, you know, sort of a hard science fiction limited to the solar system, you know, set up rules with, you know, no magic or whatever, that type of thing. But certainly, you know, depending on what the interests are of the various members here, we could, you know, make anything up. So we were talking about you could do time travel, no, I said, no, I think we said no time travel. And then, you know, so, and the other thing is you could, you could kill off another character, and so we said, well, could you have resurrections, and, you know, that type of thing. Um, but it, you know, we don't have to do, a, you know, a formal type of rule setting or anything like that, but the idea is kick this up. 50 minutes, it sounds like it's a pretty short, but that's a long time to keep, keep a story going and have all the different things. And people wander in right on cue. People wander in, and, you know, after you've set the premise and gotten the story started, then you have to, well, what do you do? Do you just let them try to figure it out, or you just back up a little bit, give them, you know, some information on what's going on? Um, so we sort of, you know, just wing that, I guess. Oh, okay, I'll, I can exit. It's all good. No, no, I, we want you to Wait, just... we're just getting started. Okay, okay so the, uh, we're going to create a story. Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out what the ground rules are for the story. And like I say, this is all really, you know, participant from the crowd here. Do we want to do like you know, a, a fantasy science fiction or just, you know, pure science fiction? We want to do, you know, things with magic, with, uh, you, know. Well, you know. So you guys, what, 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 what items would you like to have in, a, in this, this? Do you have a you know, set idea of what characters you'd like to do? Or just want to, you know, have someone start it off and we'll see where it goes? And, you could just add it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Table it, and then if we're not satisfied with the direction, we start. We can always kill it. Start. Yeah. Okay. So who wants to start? Do you want me to kick off an idea, or do you want to sort of maybe one of you have an idea that you're trying to develop? You want to have some help on that, or? I've actually got. Sorry, I've been randomly sketching. Okay. A location seems as good an idea to start with as any. Okay. Yeah, pass this around, start with a location-wise idea. And if anybody pulls off on that, okay. Okay, so do we want to make a set of ground rule that we've got to keep it within this location? 
Mm, I was thinking more that you could use this as a just a starting point. Not okay. necessarily keep it within this location, but see if it triggers any any story for anybody. Sorry, it seems it's a good method to start saying. Okay. All right. So um, you know, waiting for everybody to get a chance to look at that, but take a little bit of effort. Do you want to? Uh, just verbally tell us what this this location uh, information is, and we'll. I can describe it. If okay. I can get off. That's what I'll start off with a description. My own interpretation. Go for it. The adventurers come upon it looks like an old what looks like an old castle, a tower rising above the cliffs. A small wooden building nearest to them, and a doorway. It looks both. Inviting but foreboding. So the adventurers decide amongst themselves what they're going to do. He just walked in yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we don't have to go around either. No, we don't have to go around. Just... Uh, I may have to pass because I'm unfamiliar with the boundaries of this. Okay. You make up your own boundaries. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what I just said. The adventurers are there. They're looking at this location. Oh, okay. Well, so we have our adventurers there. They're looking at this building. It looks dark and foreboding. And they're wondering, what's up at the top? What's all the shrubbery growth around? Does someone maintain it? It looks slightly overgrown. Is there some sort of groundskeeper? Is there anyone there? It's not completely covered in ivy, so clearly someone's cared for the building, but who is this mysterious person or persons who have taken care of the building? Who are our adventurers? We have adventurers, plural. We have at least one. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we have at least one person who is male, short and relatively attractive, but he's short. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing a red shirt. Uh, <laughs> so we have at least one adventurer comes from a relatively impoverished background. He met up with these other individuals through a friend of a friend of a friend and mostly for hire. But there are several other people. There are rumors from nearby towns and across the land that there is a special object hidden inside of the castle, a box that contains a special crown. And when you put it and wear it, you're ruler of the entire world. But the problem is, is every time you open the box, it disappears. Reasoning that if there's any way to obtain it at all, they would have to find a pattern or what the next place it appears will be. The adventurers commit themselves to trying to spread out through the building, and, and each one opens the box, and while the rest of them search the nearest area, nearest area that they are, so that they can then see, see if they can determine a pattern. They continue this until well, they can predict it. Down in the bowels of this mighty uh, castle of uh, some ancient uh, time, there's a, a workshop filled with tools, various tools that he recognizes and some he does not, covered with various oils and smells and various um, levels of dust and uh, grime and there are articles around looking like perhaps it was a workshop from a group of people who maintained the entire area's uh, mechanical and, uh, and various pieces of equipment for farming and uh, for areas uh, wonderful uh, past history that included all kinds of uh, uh, crafting uh, of, of wagons and uh, so he's, he's looking around and amongst these tools with covered dust is this wooden box that is 
has one broken piece of rope on one side, and the other side is a, uh, you know, has holes, and it looks like it was put together by a, a craftsman of some talent, but has, you know, very little um, remaining paint or, or garnishment to it. it. Looks like it's been well worn over the, over the at some period of time. But in, in trying to look for a way to open it, it appears that there's there's nothing clearly uh, showing a, a hinge or any type of uh, apparatus for um, moving some side of it. Uh, and he's looking around at the various tools and he sees, you know, various sharp objects and large objects and things that might be used to open this this box. The short, handsome dude in the red shirt. <laughs> beckons a large group. So <laughs> beckons the large group of the group named Watson to attempt to open the box. <laughs> and while they're trying to open the box, they look off to the right and they see these two very glowing eyes. And it's this cat like wolf creature with these huge fangs. Seeking out to defend himself, the uh, short dude in the red shirt that picks up uh, one of the tools, hoping uh, that it's a handle of some sort. Unfortunately, when when he presses the handle, the blade comes out, but it comes out in the wrong direction and stabs, him, stabs himself in the arm. Well, fearing that he would die, the short dude in the red shirt. <laughs> He asked his fellow adventurer to get him high. <laughs> Blood dripping from the red shirt's holes. Pie clutched in one hand. The adventurers rapidly retreat towards the corner of the storeroom, gathering cobwebs around their feet and slipping on the stones. The Catlin creature, however, moves closer not hesitating at their attempts to escape. It's almost ready to pounce when a large chandelier, unseen in the depths of the ceiling, unlit for hundreds of years, pops and falls on the cat-like creature, destroying its skull. The two adventurers are left standing there staring, high dripping blood off the floor as the cat-like corpse twitches <laughs> gently. <laughs> I guess we might as well stop. We've all got the oh, sorry, stop all that. Sorry, this is how I think. So the adventurers, their unbelievable luck and good fortune, they look around, they see nothing else but this individual wolf creature in the room. And so they approach it, they look at it, and they realize that, well, it's not really a wolf, or uh, not like anything Earth-like, even, with its eyes. It's much more strange than that. It's like something that's not even from this planet, for that matter. So they examine the corpse closely and see what they can surmise. Well, got up with a stick for a moment, and they go, well, <laughs> hang on, he's a bit more squishy than we expected. So they lean in, and they, they take a tuft of his fur, and they pull it back, revealing it's actually a coat. He's not a furry wolf-like creature at all. He's a hairless humanoid. Some hundreds of thousands of miles, it, hundreds of thousands of miles away. His crew is going, where the hell did Steve go? We scanned the planet, we saw all these furry creatures, we created an appropriate disguise, and we sent him down there, and he suddenly freaking vanished. He's not on his phone, we can't get a hold of him. So what are we going to do next? Back in the room with the adventurers, there's a clattering sound, a scuffling of feet off into the echoing stairwells, and a rope dangling from where the chandelier had been. Suddenly, pieces of the glove, the chandelier that were laying all over the place, started moving and rattling. They started gathering, moving by themselves, as if moved by unseen force. 
and the pieces started to actually form into a larger version of the creature, but in the form of broken glass, and it looked at the group of people. Pie! <laughs> so, the, uh, the crystal pie creature is looking at the, the, the uh, cat-like creature on the ground, and he says, it says to the adventurers, you are in deep trouble. There is a ship that is circling your planet, and there are evil, evil creatures that are about to try to take over your world. Take these tools that you have, open this box, use the crown. If you do not gather this crown and use it, the, the um, evil people will come and take over this entire region of the world. Oh, uh, it's too young. All right. Uh, so, uh, one of the a uh, female adventurer, or uh, heretofore not introduced, uh, goes to the pile of tools, and. Um, Actually, she picks up the uh, the sharp tool that uh, the uh, short dude had dropped after he cut himself, and uh, goes to the box and uh, attempts to open it. And um, uh, that doesn't work, so she drops the that tool and comes up with uh, with something that uh, that that seems to be a um, a sphere of some kind. A, crystalline sphere and puts her hands around it and all of a sudden a, a, a um, sequence, a numeric sequence come, flashes into her mind and she goes to the box and uh, starts pressing the, the, the various points on the box in, in this numeric sequence and the box opens. Oh, me, okay. And they find um, actually something. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I draw a blank. Do we want to cut to a different story and start over, or we've all learned a bit about starting, so why not? Anybody? Anybody else? Want to start? Oh, a new story. Oh, so new story. I kind of like their story. Yeah, I just see a bunch of people passing. I don't know if there's. Faced with an empty, faced with an empty, dusty box, the explorers scratch their heads in puzzlement. It's all too much to take. The bleeding corpse on the floor, the now disintegrated cat creature, cat crystal creature, the large orb. But what are they going to do? So they decide they're going to go out and pot. <laughs> they pick up the orb, they drag the cat corpse out the door into the sunlight of the ruined castle above the cliffs above the sea. And they start trying to figure things out. They make camp for the night, they go to sleep, they have a good nap, they relax. When all of a sudden a horrendous howling noise echoes throughout the night, as their alien friends had predicted, planet is inhabited, at least in this area, by large cat-like creatures which, uh, from which the disguise was generated. They are returning to claim their orb. Yes, orb. Um, and the smell of blood draws them on towards the castle. Our explorers grab torches, accidentally setting a few trees alight in the process, and retreat to the tallest part of the tower in order to defend. They, they examine the few things that they have, including the you know, box that had the disappearing crown. And even though the girl had messed with the box, at this point, the guy with the bloody hand had it. And then he, he, he takes the box, and in desperation, he just, he just opens it. They're just looking for anything, anything they can use to defend themselves. He opens the box and there's the crown and it disappears. But 
He's still bleeding, although slightly, from the other day. And then all of a sudden, as the blood hits it, the crown remains solid as he grabs for it. So he grabs it, knowing not what else to do. He throws it on his head. And at that point, a large portal opens up in front of him. And the girl who's holding the orb, she also gets this kind of intuition from the orb that was similar to when it flashed the lights, like a vision of like what was the right thing to do. And said, basically, you should go through and then and through this orb and you can escape from the creatures that are chasing you. And so the adventurers cross through the, the, uh, the gate in front of them. They just kind of feel like they just dissolve and end up into a new place. The adventurers tumble through the portal, finding themselves in a dark alleyway. The sounds of cars all around them, honking, squealing brakes, people mussing about, mussing about in the street, but they're at the end of a dark alley, so no one seems to notice them. On the other side of the portal, flute, the few trees that were alight catch other trees. They catch the foliage on the side of the castle, and it all spreads wildly. The entire forest is engulfed in flames, and the cat-like creatures are running, running from the fire. Because though they're mighty aliens, they'll still burn. And they <laughs> climb the castle, and they see this portal open, and it's beginning to flicker, beginning to fade. And they head towards it. Two of the three cat-like creatures leap forth, the third one hesitates. Two of them make it through, and the portal collapses, and the third one's left atop the castle. He stumbles in the dark alleyway and sees the adventurers standing there, confused. They're, the aliens are just as confused, wondering what the hell is going on. Yeah. Yes. 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 To be sure. We have wolf-like good creatures and cat-like bad creatures. Mm. Well, there's also which confirmed my worldview. There's a ship. That ship is still in the True. And that ship. But we have no idea where this portal leads. Has locked in on Steve, or held Steve, and they say, "What the fuck? It's just, just here to like look into to these these ruins. We're archaeologists for Christ's sake." <laughs> and they just. <laughs> This experience why they had so much trouble fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so they see poor Steve shattered and broken and then dragged his body out and into the into the light and fire all around and everything is gone except there is a residual trace of a portal, something that they're not unfamiliar with. It's like any door, you close the door, you can still open a door. So they reopen the portal and go through to find out what the hell that somebody would do this to poor Steve. Perfectly nice guy, wife, kids. Since I walked in, I'll pass so I can find out what's going on. <laughs> and then one of the adventurers, while on the other side of the portal, finds the most beautiful pie he's ever seen. Mm -hmm. he decides, that pie. We need to like, he decides he wants <laughs> to protect this pie at all costs. To defend him, to, to even lay down his life if it means he has to. He decides, in the spur of the moment, he's going to go back through the portal and hide the pie inside of the box. But when he goes and closes the box, he puts the pie in the box and closes it, he opens it up again, and there's another crown. So, as before, the crown would disappear until he finds some blood and puts the blood on the crown. And then the crown will remain. So now he puts the crown on and another portal appears. So now he goes through the portal and here is this fantastic futuristic world with flying vehicles and uh, all kinds of buildings that have fantastic you know, qualities of, of artistic and, and uh, architectural wonder and these paths and um, waterways and these various um, creatures and, and, and uh, all kinds of wonderful flowers and, and bushes and trees. Then you know the, the air is just fresh and, and the sky is clear. There's these puffy white fly, flower, uh, 
clouds and it's you know a wondrous world and yet he hears this this sound of these cat-like creatures and coming from the portal behind him. One of the cats approaches the group and says meow. <laughs> <laughs> so they run. And just before that cat catches them, they're picked up by a gigantic creature taxi-like thing, which takes them far into the city and then kicks them off, literally. And they land in front of what appears to be a bar. And they can tell it's a bar because there's a lot of the creatures puking outside of the bar. So in this bar, there's this uh, really weird um, container. It kind of looks like um, the TARDIS from Doctor Who. And the, the people are trying to run away from these cats, so they go in there and then they get transported back to like Caveman House. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, too bad for the adventurers because, uh, meanwhile, you know, back in the, in, in the city, the um, metallic uh, pre-programmed insect horde uh, that has been programmed to eliminate uh, things like these cat creatures finally kicks into action and uh, swarms the cat creatures and consumes them. So they missed a great night out of the town, the street in the city. <laughs> um, unfortunately for the adventurers, even though they escaped from the cat -like creatures through the portal and bar, um, Steve got scratched by one of the cat creatures, and now he's growing a tail. <laughs> so before I continue, let me summarize to make sure I know where we are. Because I can't continue until I'm certain where we are. We're on the alien planet following the group of three adventurers, one named Steve, a bleeding, one female, um, one unnamed male. Um, they are, all the cat-like creatures are dead, right? And the cat-like creatures yes. are evil. Yes. Um, they were consumed by an alien metallic cord of Mindy. Yes. And they're still in the alien city, still searching for the mysterious vanishing crown that's activated by the love. And Steve just got scratched. Oh, no, no, that's and, right. No, 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 he's got the crown. His head because oh, the, blood, the, the, blood, the blood allowed it to materialize, yeah. right. and that's okay, what so first opened the portal. But, but now it's Amazing Pie that's and hiding in the box. Yes. Yes. Right. Wait, okay, so there's also Amazing Pie in the box. Like, but it's not visible until there's a blood sacrifice. <laughs> Don't forget about Steve's head. Oh! Um, so, a slow tingling head creeps along the base of Steve's spine as he staggers down the alley after his companions because for all they know, the ferocious cat-like creatures are still chasing them. He gently rubs the scab where the blood came out. It itches. He can feel strange new instincts tingling through his mind. His eyes seem to have adapted to the strange lighting in the alien city. The bar signs are suddenly much brighter, clearer. He feels an insatiable hunger building in him. He can't name it, but as he stumps after his companions, he realizes that what he lusts for is, is pie. <laughs> pie is what fills his mind with its clarion call, but he, he can't find it, except in the box. <laughs> he tackles his short male companion. The female stands back in horror and attempts to attempts to stop them, but you can't. There are, wait, there are people who just in the Okay, these guys are adventurers. Okay, these guys are adventurers. Okay, so his female companion wisely decides not to get involved because Steve is now sprouting claws. He shreds his companion and the female both, because I'm sorry, I'm having trouble remembering them. They die <laughs> for all time and their blood stains the box and it pops open. Blood sacrifice is appeased the pie gods. <laughs> Steve looms over the pie and oh, you. He looms over the pie and stuffs it in his face and just gobbles it down. And it almost seems like it satiates his, this madness that overcame him. And then he's looking and he and then but there where he shredded his companions is that crown. And then he remembers the crown. He goes, wait a minute. And then there's the orb, too. He sees that. So he puts the crown in his head. The, and the, the portal appears, and he decides to pick up the orb. 
And so then, he all of a sudden feels the orb instructing him once again. Wait, go through and you will find where you are the king. So he actually doesn't know what this means, but he steps through the portal and it, once again he finds himself in a different place and there's an honor guard.